He just knowing, okay, I'm gonna go with this character that I know does very well in this matchup, and I'm just gonna go ahead and move on a trend. He seemed really, really upset after losing to numbers like that. That's how we call. Yeah, he, he was just looking disheartened, and I think it's because he really wants to put in the effort with Terry. And I think, like I said earlier, Terry is a very good fit for him, but I also think Palutena is one of those characters that she has so many, like, jack of. She's such a jack of all trades character that I think it fits to Jen as a player very well. And the fact that he's so adept with every one of her tools is a testament to that, I think. Yep. And a really, really great parry on the soccer ball there. And I'm not sure, actually, if you parry it, does it technically count as a hitbox that can also hit numbers after it gets knocked back? No, the parry makes it a, uh, like a neutral object. Mm. Like, like a good ninja substitute. Yes. Oh, the substitute doesn't have a hitbox to it. Unless it's Greninja itself, that Greninja flies yeah. in on you. I digress. Uh, we have to worry about refit now. And while the ball itself is going to put in quite a, a lot of effort for forcing a reaction out of Jen, it's this deep breathing buff that I think we have to be the most concerned with. Neutral is not enough to take out uh, Numbers stock. And I really like the commitment because honestly, Neutral basically beats out anything that Numbers can do off stage, unless Numbers like perfectly tries to time like a soccer ball spike. But aside from that, like Palutena is now just basically going to say no to everything uh, Numbers can do off stage. Yeah, it's going to take a lot of effort from uh, from Numbers to net the kill off stage. But when it comes to on stage, if he can lock down the ledge, that's going to put in a lot of work for him. Both these players are just playing really, really patiently. The back hit, of course, not going to kill them across the stage. Um, the aggressive option for numbers and is able to come back unpunished. Um, I think it's because Jen overcommitted to his multi hit there. Um, so he has to be a little bit more wary of that. <laughs> <laughs> Probably one of the cheekiest things that numbers does on purpose is that duck mm. just to get himself out of harm's way. You want the taunt too? Who is this? That, that's anytime you waste. If anytime you like have a gap in time, John will just use it to stretch his legs. Yep. And despite having the percent disadvantage, um, John was still able to actually take the stock before numbers. All right, <laughs> just moving a little bit more yeah. than necessary. Yeah, no, the warp canceling actually working out very well for John. It's keeping him safe through the uh, the hail of aerials because he's just forcing numbers to guess where he's going to be. He doesn't want to risk anything with the landing, especially a character like Weepit can easily catch you landing with maybe like the reverse hitbox of, of f and right. send you flying into the blast zone. So it seems tough. Yeah. Not even got one of the uh, the nervous reactions out of numbers yeah. whenever he goes to itch himself. Yep, and the deep breathing f is definitely one of uh, Weepit's most consistent uh, kill moves. Definitely something to be on the lookout for. And the nail nail, but not being able to catch Weepit. Oh. oh, that's from way too deep, too. All right, yeah. Numbie's not happy with that one in the slightest. He's going to end up dropping game one pretty quick fashion. Not, he didn't just drop game one. He got JV3 in game one. He got spiked and then got hit by a spike and the falling Saku. I mean... That was nuts. <laughs> yeah, that was a bit of a rough call. <laughs> that was a little bit of an anticlimactic, but a definitive end. Um, and John has to like really, really shake it off and just get himself back into the game after something like that. I think the pick into Inova was really good for him because it's going to give him a fairly safe ledge to play off of, but also the plats themselves are very wide. And so. also the uh, lip on the uh, sides of the stage will also just sort of limit uh, Jen's ability to recover. So he can't recover from vertically down. He has to always make sure he's drifted enough to either side of it. Snap onto ledge. Otherwise, he'll just bounce off and lose the stock prematurely. What's the plan? All right, patience from, what, from Jen working out really nicely. That's the one bad thing about Ooh. picking the stage into Palu is the fact that she can control this ledge very confidently. A lot of her tools, it, the, the size of the platforms doesn't really limit how good those tools are, and she herself can navigate the the, uh, the main plat really well. It's just that offstage play becomes a little bit more dangerous than typical, but outside of that, the stage kind of nice for Palutena. 
And you see Numbly is going through more in this set, uh, in this game rather than the last one. He's going through more ledge trumps and more attempts to two frame. And that's because he's more confident in Jen's angle and timing of his recovery. He knows that Jen can't mix it up by drifting downwards. He has to always recover either horizontally or diagonally. He cannot go vertically under. Forcing that lateral play out of Jen is going to limit him, Ooh. but right now Numbers isn't really putting up enough of a fight for Jen to be limited off stage like that. You're gonna see the even stock count, but Jen has been dictating every time this battle's taking place with the ledge. He's been confident in control of it. While Numbers has had no issue with getting rid of the uh, the damage deficit, he's still landing on Jen's call. Like, Jen's in full control of where these battles are taking place. And I feel like something also to note about Jen's ledge trapping is the way he's positioning himself is not just to hit numbers, he's hitting numbers off stage. The way he's standing under the platforms, he's not hitting back his back to the center of stage. He's always facing the proper way with the neutral airs, like making sure to properly reverse them when necessary. Whatever is needed to like perpetuate numbers is advantage. And it can seem like a really obvious thing to be hitting the opponent off stage, but Jen just like goes the extra mile to always be going through those options. And the explosive flame catching numbers to drift, but not enough to take out the stock quite yet. Yeah, but still, nonetheless, a wonderful chain of damage. And look at that, the hard call out on seeing the dunk. We see it work once before, but not again. And as I, Jen is on the fast track to getting this reset bracket. And I favorite. feel like numbers was trying to maybe duck under an F tilt of sorts. Um, I think he, Weefit is able to do that, but I'm not entirely sure what Numbers is thinking behind that was. Yeah, now Palu can actually hit with the uh, the forward tilt, but gra all the grabs would have whiffed, yeah. which is something worth noting considering how Palutena has probably one of the better set of grabs in this game. For that, I mean pivot and dash are still equally as good as standing. I digress. None of it's really helping out Numbies this, at this point as he's back on the ledge and it's Jen who put him there. And I don't think what Numbers did a little bit earlier was necessarily optimal. He was able to get the soccer ball hit on Jen, but then he immediately retreated backstage, to which Jen responded with another neutral air. So instead of actually getting the stage control when it was really important, he just faded back. And I love that pivot grab through Jen. It was so beautifully spaced. Ah, oh, oh. missing the air dodge. And we didn't even see a wall jump from Numbers, too. Oh. And that's going to be the bracket reset for Jen. And honestly, Numbers needs to find something that's going to get the momentum back into his favor because this is looking like a very, like the pacing of these sets right now is like really, really confidently in Jen's favor. Um, so Numbers, I feel like Numbers has to be like a lot more assertive with getting back onto stage because Jen is just like racking up the percentage on him. And what I would like to see out of Numbers is him fighting out of center stage more. Even though we know him for his legendary ledge play, him putting himself in that situation against Jen, I think, is just the wrong call. Yeah. Maybe a different Palutena, but not this one. On top of that, being able to shark, especially on Smashville, is going to be pivotal for just racking up free damage. He can yep. start plenty of combos with Header. There itself is fantastic, especially with the deep breathing buff. Mm -hmm. Almost getting it down here, but a little bit too often the timing. I believe that was a, a, a couple of frames too early for it to properly get the down air. Um, but regardless, right now, like, wow, the percentages, I feel like for the first time in the set are in numbers favor. He has a very, very confident uh, lead right now. And look at that. Ooh. It's because he's fighting out from center stage. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I mean. He changed up the momentum. But what a, like, the positioning from gender. Looking like Smash 4, I thought he ran through numbers for a second. <laughs> this is, I think, the third one that Jen managed to get this, uh, this set. Wow. If you're counting all of Grand Finals as a cumulative set. And the up air, of course, going to actually beat out the neutral air. I think he still maybe had some of the invulnerability from the Angel Platform up air. Um, but yeah, Numbers is like taking the time off stage. Oh no, is he? Oh, okay. Oh. I was about to say, at 21, that was... That would have been a really, really unfortunate one there. Um, I almost turned on the player mics. <laughs> In you fact, can't, you can't, I don't want none of that smoke, you can't do that. <laughs> I do not want to hear Numbers angry mumbling. That was beautiful from Numbers, he completely ducked under Jen's um, aerial there and was able to get the whiff punish on it. So I love that awareness of like knowing, okay, Jen's going to land aggressively with either the forward or the back here at this moment in time. But these two are no strangers to fighting each other. Mm -hmm. But I feel like the way that Jen is playing tonight is really forcing out the, the best of Numbers' aggro play. Because, like, Numbers has to make it count every time he gets a hit on. Yeah. 
so good. Good catch with the forward shot, almost killed him. Okay, uh, closely getting the late hitbox on the dash attack. But the back is more than enough to take out the stock. And once again, like, I feel like a stage like Smashville might be really, really good for, like, pumping up the aggression as Palutena because she can get so many platform extensions on this kind of a stage. And, like, she, oh my god, those teleport cancel skim channel is so menacing. I, I feel like Smashville is one of the best stages for Palutena, and I can even, like, see an argument for it being the best stage for her just because of how fast-paced she can build up her momentum. Yep. Like, Palutena's ability to snowball on this stage with just a little bit of control is nuts. And even though Numbers is doing an alright job of keeping up to pace, it's just consistently been an uphill battle for him, even on his pick. This is really, really scary for Jen, but he was somehow able to completely reverse the pressure with that very nicely timed forward <laughs> I thought for a second that the soccer ball was going to hit Numbers, but of course it was his own projectile, just phased right through him. And both of these players are just... I mean, Numbers, like, wants to take out the stock right now. Like, he has to. Like, Jen sitting at 167%. He needs anything. He can't afford to get too antsy, though, because if he gives up this little bit of space that he's managed to keep between him and Jen... And that's going to be the back throw. Yep. More than enough to take it out right there. The back here just completely whiffed. Not sure, not sure what happened though. Yeah, this is a 3D fighter, man. <laughs> Sometimes the game likes to remind us. All right. Wow. Okay, once nice. again. <laughs> <laughs> Numbers is just weaving through everything that Jen is throwing at him right now. This is a really nice spark of good play that we're seeing out of Numbers. Ah, uh, I think he's maybe trying to go for a grab there, a roll behind grab, one of the most classic ledge traps in any iteration of Smash, but um, came out as a jab. Not entirely sure what Jen's thinking behind that was. Um, Numbers is trying to close it out really, really quick with those F-tilts. And I do believe he has deep breathing active, or not anymore, actually. Oh, he's trying. He's got it. He's got limit on deck. <gasps> and Limit Blade Beam does it. <laughs> wow. All right, so before you can even press it into the screen, FD and Kalos are off the board. Yeah, Numbers wants to make sure that if he has to land somewhere there, he's got some sort of option mm -hmm. that's somewhere in the same vicinity. Stop the battle. We and Jen's going to be sticking with the Wii. So I'm not entirely sure what Jen could have done to... He had to had somehow racked up more percent on John during his second stock because I feel like John was like sitting at 50 to 60 without taking much damage at all, actually. And like once again, going back to Smashville, John is already racking up 29% trying to get something started with those neutral airs, of which we fit has so many follow-ups, like an up air, but John ah, is able to air dodge right through that one. I think it's just a matter of like John picking and choosing when he wants to play the game with Jen. Because we've seen now that where John is able to just opt to set himself up at the ledge and not interact with Politana, all of a sudden the battle's a lot more even-handed. Mm -hmm. But when he tries to bring the battle head on to Palu, is when we really start to see the damage not even just equalize, but go heavily in favor of Jen because it'll become to a point where Jen is able to take full stage control. The run back to Smash I think is really smart because for the most part, Jen was winning that game one. It was just Numbers able to really clutch things out and did it in his favor. But will he be able to do so again? And I can't help but suspect that the, the eye there on the down throw was maybe a little bit suboptimal because I don't think the back here should have converted it. And I love that from Numbers using the soccer ball to stall through the explosive flame but still getting scooped up by Palutena's neutral air. That move is so active and it will just kill you at any point. Ugh. Definitely. Good like, move, good move. <laughs> absolutely menacing. Oh, hold on. Where's the down? You know, every, every bone in Jen's body wanted a down air to end that string. Keeps going for them, and it's honestly fantastic that he does because he's just able. If he does get the reward there through such a high commitment, like the reward is immense. He took out a stock at 20%, and he has a two stock lead, you know? So it's very, very smart that he does keep going for them. He has a very good sense of like risk versus reward here. Yeah, I've said it once, I'll say it again. One of Jen's greatest attributes as a player is his decision making skills. Like, he knows what he's able to get off of any of the moves that he puts out, and it's very rare that we see him overextend because of that. Yep. 
and the times he does like overextend a little bit, he's almost always rewarded for it with a really, really big punisher, perhaps even taking the stock. And Numbers is trying to set up the deep breathing. I do think that was bait, knowing full well that he would not be able to get it out in time, maybe trying to bait an aggressive option from Jen. But the explosive flame scooping him up, and now Jen is sitting at a very, very comfortable lead right now. 133 could get melted by any of the uh, the deep breathing buffed aerials, I think. But not at the ledge. Photor's not going to be able to do it. Back air, though, and absolutely going to do it. No option to survive there. All right. Jen setting up the stock, but not much else to speak to his control. Not being able to punish Numbers' dash attack on the shield. I can't help but think maybe he didn't react in time. Or maybe he was trying to bait a panic option of Numbers after he didn't commit to something so aggressive on shield. Well, regardless, Numbers is able to get away from that interaction seemingly unscathed. And both of them are just like playing this so slowly. Jen is just like, oh, okay. Yeah, man, it's all about... You know, it's, it's funny you say how it's slowly and then you see him rush right in, but it's that matter of patience. It's the idea of, all right, I'll weather the storm. He's going to throw a lot of soccer balls and suns at me, but eventually it's got to stop, and eventually he's going to mess up his rhythm. And when that happens, Paul, it's on a half the speed to move in and punish heavily. That was really, really scary. Ah, <gasps> uh, okay. Very rare instance of Jen getting spooked off. He could have dared, he could have down tilted instead. He got backed off by his numbers. And that's going to give Numbies a second lease on life. Now he has a deep breathing off. This is like he's looking to get any sort of damage backed up. And the way that we fit operates, it's kind of like most of your damage is going to be coming. Like, unless you commit to something like a falling neutral, most of your damage is going to be coming from soccer ball. It's going to be coming from, you know, like 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 little, little bits here and there. And getting hit by his own soccer ball twice. Good scoop with the up there. But now he's got a whole other stock to do it with. And he's not going to do it in this game. Yep. All right, so this is the truest end that we could possibly have to play. No uh, thank you so much to Burning Key for right. the subscription. Got another one. Let's go. A lot of support for the, uh, for the boys here in the house tonight. Final so, match is getting played on Unova tonight. What do you think about this one, Dara? Um, I feel like it was really fortunate for Numbers that he got the stage advantage here because he did win game one. So, of course, you know, there's a little bit of suboptimal through Palutena, you're limiting your recovery options. But other than that, I feel like it's really, really neutral. I feel like um, Jan is able to get, like, a lot of ledge traps here, but missing it already, which is just a little bit surprising and uncharacteristic. But Palutena being such a big body and having such giant hitboxes that are active for so long, like, it's going to make it very, very difficult for numbers to actually, like, get back. And there he only took a back here, but he already immediately retreated to ledge again, which, again, like, I can't help but wonder if, if it's questionable. It's that, That's the numbers classic, man. He will go to the ledge, whether or not it's the best or worst option for you to do it. Ledge is fun. You know, 9 out of 10 players, you see him go to the ledge against uh, a player like Jen, and you think it's a disaster. But that's where Numbers thrives. It's where he plays the most comfortably. And honestly, it's, I feel like it's where we see the most options from him at these mid to, uh, at these middling percentages. And both of these players, I just love like the way they're playing with like so much precision and intentionality. You don't see any unnecessary movement from either of them. They're like doing, like, Everything just has like a purpose, and it's just so difficult to describe it each and every single one. It's really meticulous play. Yeah, man. When they're both on stage, that's where it's all fun in games. They try to go for the clips. They try to, you know, go for bigger combos. But once it's the ledge play, it's all business. And Numbers is like choosing to take the time to fade back and charge up his neutral B a little bit, which is a little bit like once again questionable and like wondering maybe he should do this when he's an advantage. Missing the tech on you know, like he certainly could have lived that really, really unfortunate, but now Jen is starting to make a lead for himself for like a game that was mostly even up until this point. Jen looking to get something started with the rising neutral is not able to connect and find them. Numbers though was able to get a whiff punish neutral B though. And I feel like this is where we can credit Jen for trying to play like the long game with numbers where he's been playing particularly bold, even for like his own style of play. And I feel like that has a number on someone as you go over the course of the Amazing set. tech chase dealing 43%. That's a really nice shorten on that. All right. Oh, 
Numbers just seem so frustrated with all of the play, and, well, it's, you know... <gasps> and he's just gonna run up and reverse F-tilt him? You like this? I don't even know if we had good DI on that one. That just looked like a really good response from the stuff. That was gone. definitely not an option I was expecting, but certainly worked out for them. But again, Numbers is like taking a really slow off stage, taking the time to charge up a little bit of his deep breathing. Waiting for his opportunity to try and take control of this ledge, but it is so difficult. And the spacing on that soccer ball was immaculate. And yeah, that's the thing about, you know, but had Jen risked a further angle, what happened was he would have could have bounced on the lip of Yanova. The one time he went off stage, he lost his stock so early. And a mistake like that could be very, very dangerous, especially when you're fighting a character like Reefit who can hold the stock like nobody else. Numbers is racking up the damage, trying to end it all with the down air, not able to get it in his own soccer ball. Uh, blocking his neutral beat. He's trying. You gotta give him credit for him. But now this is... All the chips are down on Numbers Fields. Like, bleeding heavily. He's still got the stock to play with, but at the ledge with Jen, it's not gonna last for long. And just like that, it's final stocks across the board. 62% is a lot to work with for... for... We fit. Whether or not Numbers wants to stall it out, whether or not he wants to kill early. Right now, numbers is numbers leaving completely ran out. Jen is not going to get anything off of the neutral air. Unfortunately, a little bit too close to the edge of the stage, getting the falling back air dash attack, starting to lower the like the percent deficit between them. All right, big retreat from numbers. He needs to give up that stage control to get his resources back up. He does not have enough time to get a full sun, sun salutation. Can't get deep breathing established, but. Thankfully, he's managed to put in enough work against Jen that he's threatened a lot of space, and he's forced Jen to respect him off stage. That shield hurt him. Mm -hmm. And Weefit does have a shield being set up, but the Florida so active, and that is Grand Finals, with numbers being the champion here. Okay. He looked so disheartened by it, too. He, yeah. like, he even, like, just, like, casually tossed his controller onto the table, like, I guess that's okay. it. That's it? I mean, that's how it goes. He got the buff. Mm -hmm. He managed to get the last possible hit of that forward air. Yep. And even with good DI, there's almost so much you could do it. Mm -hmm. Like, what was that, 100, 160, yep. somewhere around that percentage? Like, it was, like, Palu was mm -hmm. set to die. But also, I feel like that was a really, really late hitbox of the forward air, because I, like, I saw, I think Jen was, like, more or less, like, disappointed in the fact that, okay, yeah, I Dad, thought I had the lead on kill this move. feed up one more time? I just want to see what the, the DI the was. last kill? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm just curious to see how he DI'd it, because Palu dying at 156 off the ledge, that's okay. But something tells me, like, it might not have been the best. Look at that. It was I, already past the initial point of, there, like, the launch. There's no, there's, no, uh, there's no DI thing, which I'm pretty sure means he didn't DI at all. Oh, I, I, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's what it means. Can when you the, click when it the forward a tiny bit? Yeah, sure. Uh, I don't know if the particle will stay up past the. Uh, the well, kill. remember the the di the blue di thing uh, it is visible when you're in the hit stun. So I'm pretty sure if it's not there at all, it means they didn't di at all. Yep. So. All right. Yeah. No di on fair. Yeah. That was also this, uh, oh, numbers so just call, that's just what I was saying. That's what I was there. saying. It was a really, really active hitbox. It yeah. lasted for so long. And that's why I feel like John was a little bit disappointed that he died to it. All right, but I nonetheless. Just, all right, he, all right. John wants to say something. All right, something. Mr. Numbers, you got to say. I'm the big winner. Woo. God damn it! Should have muted your mic. All right, and that's all you get to hear from us. Uh, okay. Yep. No. Bye.